Hey there, it's Max, back for the fourth and final uh, speed paint of this little series for my random aesthetic challenge. Uh, this final one was clean futurism. Uh, so I am a big science fiction nerd, love some classic sci-fi, so I wanted to get a little bit of that in here. Uh, as with my previous speed paints, start off with um, a bit of a gesture drawing and then locking in a bit of the anatomy, using some reference for this guy. Um, I think that that just helps focus on the costuming, which was the main focus for this little series. Uh, so my goal for this render was to uh, have, you know, very clean line work, actually. That was sort of my main goal. Um, so I'm trying, off, trying out some different hair, different hats, um, locking in a bit of the look. I think that with uh, futuristic fashion, it really allows us to get kind of silly with the silhouette. So I, I try out a couple different looks. It takes me a little bit longer to settle in. Uh, the first one was like too funky, then it's too normal, then it's too funky again. I want something that was like uh, interesting without being so just, um, you know, something that you could take seriously uh, while still being kind of whimsical and futuristic. So uh, using more of like a, you know, some square language design in this one. Um, I think that the, the boots turned out a little weird. Uh, one of the things that I noticed in my drawing is just, uh, you know, keeping keeping proportions correct, uh, especially as you're zooming in and zooming out. Um, that, that's a big thing to pay attention to, keeping proportions uh, making sense. All right, so the line work for this one, as I said, that was my main focus here. So I sort of do my gesture drawing and put on the anatomy and then I put on the clothing and then I used um, a much finer um, pencil brush than I normally use. I, I think that we can get very comfortable with big uh, brush marks. It tends to hide a lot, whereas with thinner lines you don't have uh, as much forgiveness. If a curve is not correct, it's a lot easier to notice. So definitely spent a nice long time on the line work while still keeping in mind things like line weight. So there are some nooks and crannies, some overlaps that I really wanted to pay attention to so that if um, you know a thicker line is on top and a thinner line is on bottom, that's typically uh, the way that we like to go. Because of course, as things are closer to us, they're, they they feel darker or heavier. Then doing a little bit on the outline so that the interior lines feel more delicate than the outside lines. So once I had the line work done, I wanted to just try out some of my colors. Uh, you know, I've got this dark red, super bright blue, and um, uh, this warm neutral tone. And honestly, for clean futurism, when I, I first rolled that one in the uh, generator, I thought like, okay, it's gonna be like very um, desaturated, very uh, like white and cream and, and not, nothing too intense, but this color palette is, is pretty intense. So this was quite interesting. So um, I have turned on the super speed up to put in my shading, and then I ended up using sort of a um, more painterly brush on top. I think that it really helps to get across some texture, and then we put in a background. So this is the technique I use just to put in some like effect brushes for a nebula. I end up not liking it. Uh, so we'll just go with stars and a planet. Uh, I, I really like making planets like this. And then just, you know, a little haze in the background, and we're done. All right, this has been the end of my four-part random aesthetic 
generator series. So uh, if you like this one, let me know if you have a suggestion for an aesthetic that you'd like to see me try out. Drop me a comment. I'd love to try out something new. Uh, otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.